This is how the moon looked through the first ever optical scope I came across. It was only $15. The next one looked like this and my channel videos are there to prove that it just kept getting better and better as I kept climbing the telescope ladder. Today I have a telescope with a league of its own. Here's a glimpse of the moon that I caught through it. This is the Miro Sky KOI-127 Smart Telescope. Other than possessing some of the best optical lenses inside, it also comes equipped with a one-of-a-kind auto-align technology with a database of thousands and thousands of stars and other celestial bodies. So all you have to do is tap on it in the phone and the telescope points right to it. Planets, nebulas, galaxies, you name it, they have it. I've got some awesome footage of the moon, Saturn and Jupiter lined up for you. So let's unbox it and see what all the package comes loaded with. It came in two massive long cardboard cartons. The contents of these are the 1900mm lens to which is attached the 127mm finder scope, a power supply bracket which also hosts the two motors to spin the telescope on two axes, a zenith mirror, a 25mm eyepiece, a 5 megapixels camera module, a flash drive with data extraction softwares and raw image converters, a data transfer cable, a power adapter, two DC connectors, and finally a tripod with extendable legs. I'll be sticking to the minimum height for this video. This is practically a stool and rightfully so because for astrophotography you need the equipment to be super stable. Tiny movements can cause your precious images to turn out blurry or completely out of frame. Once we have the power supply bracket mounted safely, all I have to do is make sure it is completely leveled and this water bubble thingy which is also a compass helps with that. You can either hook up the bracket to AC supply via the adapter or go portable with a battery. This is uh, basically a 318650 battery setup which I got made in Dubai as DHL won't ship it along with the telescope. Now it's time to mount the telescope on the power supply bracket and secure it with this giant screw on one side. Now it's time to remove all the lenses caps and fit everything into its place. The zenith mirror goes onto the 1900mm Markstoff classic grain lens and on that the 25mm eyepiece. Now the finder scope by itself is a 127mm telescope but you don't need to hook up the zenith mirror to it. You can simply slide in the eyepiece and you're good to go. Same goes for the camera. If you want to capture something with a finder scope like the moon or nebulas, you can simply slide the camera directly onto it. Or if you're looking for planets, uh, slide it on the zenith mirror on the bigger lens. Not to forget, you can mount your own DSLRs and mirrorless cameras as long as you have the right kind of adapters. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail here because most of you watching this video will already have an idea about this. But for those who don't, the finder scope, the smaller one, has a wider field of view. So you can first spot the celestial body that you're looking for and then you can observe it through the bigger lens. For that, the finder scope has to be perfectly aligned with the bigger lens uh, and that is what these tortuous looking screws all over the finder scope are for. To start with, I'm going to mount the camera on my smaller lens and the eyepiece on the bigger one. Both the lenses have focus adjustment wheels on them. It's slightly different on both with the one uh, on the big one being very smooth and easy to control. Next step is to connect the camera module to the power supply bracket with the cable provided which is USB-C at one end and some sort of ethernet on the other one. Power on the telescope and let it rise. It will take its horizontal position in a couple of seconds and now it's time to fetch your phone. Download the MiroSky smartphone application and now go to your phone's Wi-Fi settings. Click on this QR code scanner icon and now take the battery compartment cover and on the back you'll find a QR code. Scan it and connect to it. This is basically the Wi-Fi signal the camera module is transmitting. Once connected, go to the MiroSky app and now you'll see it will show the status of the telescope as connected. Now MiroSky has developed this app specifically for this telescope and it contains over 100,000 stars and other celestial bodies database. You name it, they have it. There's an icon on the right which says layers. Click on it and turn on gravity sensor. This allows you to view sort of an augmented reality version of your visible sky. You can hunt visually for the planet or galaxy that you're looking for uh, by turning the phone around or you can simply go to search and search for it. Under search you'll also notice that they have already made different categories for planets, stars, other deep sky objects categorized under their NGC and Messier numbers and the camera module has the ability 
to recognize them individually based on the star pattern in the frame. It's completely mind blowing. It will show the real time coordinates and everything related to anything you select on the screen. None of the stars you see on the screen are for design. Each one is in the database and can be observed through the telescope. It also shows what is visible now within the next half an hour along with its uh, rise and setting times for your region. It also has different icons when in the sky map mode for galaxies, nebulas, etc. So you can easily distinguish between them just by looking at them. Next step, go to a dark place and set up your telescope. Actually for the moon and planets like Jupiter and Saturn, you don't really need to go to a place that is very dark and isolated. Uh, as long as it is night time, you can see it pretty much from anywhere. Now in the app, look for the moon and press go to. Once the compass is set, click proceed and now wait for the telescope to automatically make its way until it has the moon in its sight. No more manual latitude, longitude entries, no more time entries, everything in the palm of your hand. This is how the moon looks with the 127mm lens. Now at this point you can observe it on your phone screen as it is transmitting a real time image uh, or you can take out the camera and replace it with the 25mm eyepiece to observe it with your eyes. If you want to take pictures or videos of the moon, you can do that too from the app. They can be saved either to the phone that you are using the app from or directly to the camera module and you can retrieve it from there using the PC application. Since the finder scope has a wider view, it is able to capture all of the moon in one frame. But if you want to take a closer look, switch to the bigger lens. This is how it looks. Now at this point, I had run out of storage on the camera module. so. I just uh, made a screen recording of my phone. But look at that. I have never seen the moon this close up with any of the telescopes I've played with in the past. Whenever I get my hands on an optics gadget like this one or even the smaller ones I've reviewed in the past, I have this habit of demoing in such a way which uh, gives perspective. Now this thing is meant for observing celestial bodies. I like to point at something on the ground which is far off in the distance, have a look at through the camera, and then see how it looks through the optics thing which I have. Now in this case, I'm gonna point to something right over here. You see this bluish sort of light in the distance? This is the Dubai Outlet Mall and it is in a straight line five kilometers from here. Now with the camera, you can barely see sort of a bluish light. This is its main logo. It is nice and big, so it should be visible through the telescope. Uh, with my camera, this is what you see without the zoom. And if I try and zoom in completely, this is how it looks at max. Now I'm gonna try and hook up the telescope. First, I'm gonna look through the uh, the smaller uh, lens which is the moon observing lens and then I'm going to switch to the bigger one which is a planet observing lens and see how it looks through them. Next stop, Saturn. Everyone loves those rings, right? Same as before, search for Saturn, click go to and then proceed. Once again, I'm starting with the small lens even though it is not ideal for planets but I always like to offer perspective. This is how it looks with the 127mm lens and this is with the 1900mm lens. Now I do have to point out that astronomy is not for the impatient. Sometimes the telescope will point in the right direction but not square on it. And since the big lens has such a small window of vision because of the level of zoom, you might have to adjust the scope a little bit and you can do that from the app itself by using the adjustment buttons. You can select the speed at which you want to move the telescope and this is super handy because at this level of magnification there is absolutely no way you can adjust such a bulky machine with your hands and still have Saturn in your view. Next up is Jupiter and its moons, our solar system's biggest planet. This is how it looks with the 127mm lens, quietly drifting with its three, sometimes four visible moons and when you switch to the bigger lens, this is how it looks. The camera is doing an excellent job, but let me tell you, what you see with your naked eye through that 1900mm lens, it's a different story. No image comes even close to it. That crystal clear view of a planet 1.35 billion kilometers away from us, and yet you can see it in all its glory with the help of this machine, it's out of this world, pun intended. Just to be clear, this telescope is not just meant for planetary or moon observation. It is capable of deep sky observation. For example, this picture was taken with this telescope. Awesome, right? However, that will be another video or else this one will become a documentary. 
For now, that's gonna do it, but do subscribe and stay tuned, and I'll be posting another video once I have some decent deep sky images. And if you want to lay your hands on this telescope, I'll leave the link in the description box below, check it out. Personally, I feel this auto-align technology will be a game changer, especially for people who always think astronomy is a complicated thing. It is an interesting mashup of high quality optical lenses, some solid hardware and extremely intricate software, and it's gonna make reaching for the stars much easier. Once again, pun intended. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and share it with your friends and family. While you're at it, subscribe to my booth and turn on all notifications so you don't miss out on any new uploads. Click on the thumbnails to watch my other videos or check out my YouTube channel for more. And as always, thanks for watching.